Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Oliver Moneycurl. Oliver joined IPI, the International Press Institute, in September 2019, first as Turkey Campaign Coordinator, and then as Head of Europe Advocacy and Programs. He leads IPI's advocacy around EU legislation, including the rule of law mechanism, the safety of journalists' recommendation, the anti slap directive, and now the European Media Freedom Act. He has been specifically focused on the question of media capture faced by IPI's members in Central and Eastern Europe. Oliver has over two decades of experience in the press freedom and media development field, having previously worked as director of programs at the International Federation of Journalists. Okay, Oliver, you know about your challenge, telling us how to fix an element included or omitted in the Media Freedom Act. Okay, well, first of all, thank you very much for, for inviting me here. Um, so at IPI, as you said, um, we're very focused on media capture, particularly the politically driven media capture, where governments abuse the economic and regulatory powers of the state to exert control over media. And IPI's members in Central and Eastern Europe have first-hand experience of how this throttles independent journalism. There are several key elements to media capture, um, turning public broadcasters into government propaganda, filling regulatory bodies with political appointees, abusing economic power to fund pro-government media while starving independent journalism of those same funds, and finally, using the above tools to create a circle of loyal oligarchs to run private media on the government's behalf. The EMFA tries to address all of these and does so with varying degrees of success. But let us look more closely at the media's financial relations with the state. The abuse of state advertising is a well-documented problem across Central Europe, but it undoubtedly spreads much further as the temptation to misuse state funds to reward friends or friendly coverage can be irresistible. Last year, Austrian cha Chancellor Sebastian Kurz was forced to resign after allegations of attempting to bribe media. So it's extremely important that this is being addressed in Article 24 of the EMFA, which introduces criteria for the fair distribution of state advertising and for the transparent reporting of advertising expenditure. This is very welcome, but there are significant weaknesses. Firstly, the loophole that exempts local governments with a population of under 1 million from transparency obligations needs to be closed. Local governments in many countries have a stranglehold on local media and state advertising is the noose held around their necks. Moreover, national governments seeking to get around the transparency obligations may simply redirect funds through local governments to avoid accountability. We've heard that the administrative costs for reporting on local governments is too burdensome. But this argument is unconvincing since local governments are usually legally obliged to maintain records of all such expenditure. Leaving this exemption in place would seriously weaken the proposal. Secondly, the EMFA does not define who should develop the criteria for distribution. At the moment, it is left to member states and the national regulatory authorities to draw up the criteria and monitor the expenditure. Where regulators have already been captured, they are unlikely to establish robust criteria. To address this, we propose that the new European Board for Media Services develops model criteria as part of its tasks defined under Article 12H, and that the regulators be obliged to consult with local media stakeholders on developing national criteria. Thirdly, Article 24 should be expanded to cover all forms of state support for media, including media subsidies, there are many models for insulating public subsidies from political influence. Some are better than others. So as with state advertising, the board should develop best practice models for member states to apply. Lastly, the EMFA needs to be expanded to address the backdoor financing of media owners. One of the unwritten rules for assembling an inner circle of oligarchs to do the government's bidding that those oligarchs enrich themselves in the process. State advertising obviously plays a role, 
but more commonly, the real profiteering takes place beyond the media sector through state contracts secured in other industries. Prior to the 2008 financial crisis, much of the media in Central and Eastern Europe was foreign owned, mostly German. This crisis led to the departure of those companies who were replaced by local businessmen, many of whom had made their fortunes in industries dependent on state contracts, such as construction, energy, agrochemicals, uh, finance, etc. They purchased media not for profit, but for influence. These businesses are guaranteed soaring profits for their companies in other industries on the condition that the media stay loyal to the party in power. It's a pattern that was established in Russia and repeated in Turkey, Hungary, Poland, Bulgaria, and the Czech Republic to varying degrees. And it provides the fuel that drives media capture. For the EMFA to really confront media capture, it needs to go far further. It must ensure transparency of all financial relations between the state and media. It must ensure the fair distribution of state advertising funds and media subsidies. And it must tackle the indirect state financing of media owners through sister companies in other industries. For example, would it really be so difficult to bar companies which own media over a certain size from participating in public tenders in industries outside of the media? At a stroke, it would cut off the finance of media capture and tip the balance back in favour of independent journalism. Thank you, Oliver. Um, I think that those are very practical uh, examples and also very practical solutions to the loophole you mentioned at the start in terms of maybe having taken a view that was too narrow about what media capture can mean and how it can be uh, exerted uh, by the state. It's also good, I think, to remind people that these things hit close to home. Um, you know, you mentioned Austria, Eastern Europe. It, it, it's very pervasive uh, across the EU in different forms, obviously. Some are blunter than others. Uh, but I think, um, I hope that the... Uh, MEPs and the council members uh, will listen to your recommendations on Article 24 and that we will come out with something that is robust and that ensures that media freedom is not an empty concept. Thank you so much. Thank you.